Hello and welcome to this video in which I will show you how I painted uh, Sar back uh, from the Shade Spire Moody Black Rods. I started off by priming the model using Kales Black through a rattle can. Uh, once that's dry, I went a mixture of four parts black and one part anthracite grey. And I painted the entire model uh, with this coat I made sure I covered everything I missed with a spray can. Once that's dry, I washed the entire model using non-oil. You can be pretty liberal with it, um, it doesn't really matter. You just want it to be in the recesses and everywhere else we're going to paint over anyway. Next I make a mixture of two parts black and one part anthracite grey. And I start with the first highlight. This is a pretty rough highlight covering most of the areas on the model. I just make sure I stay away from the deepest recesses. Next I added two parts anthracite grey to the previous mixture and I continued the highlighting process. Uh, I did this by leaving a little bit of the previous highlight visible and just building the color up. At some parts during the painting of this model the, the mushrooms on the basing actually really got in the way of um, how, the, how to hold the brush so that might take a little bit to figure out. For the next highlight I added three parts anthracite grey to the mixture and I continued building it up leaving little bits of the previous layer visible. If you find this too much work for just a simple black uh, rope, um, leave some of the layers out. I then made a mixture of uh, one part black and six parts anthracite grey and I again repeated the process. And for now I finished it off with an edge highlight of anthracite grey. At this stage I wasn't sure if, I'm, if I was going to leave it like this, but um, I prefer to continue painting a bit and to then see how the model is going to look and then I'll decide if I'm going to add an additional highlight. So I started on the skin by making a mixture of one part boreal tree green and two parts Sherwood green and I just blocked in all the skin on the model. As you're going to see I forgot the legs uh, which I painted in later. Next I washed all the skin using peel tan green. Once that wash was dry, I made a mixture of one part boreal tree green and three parts Sherwood green and I started building up the first highlight on the skin. On the skin I made sure I left a little bit of the previous green layer and the wash in the recesses visible. For the next layer, I added three parts moon yellow to the mixture and I started reinforcing the previous highlight. Again, I make sure I leave some parts of the previous highlight visible whilst I'm doing this and I just build up the color. And on some areas you might want to do this two or three times to get a more vibrant color. I added, then added one part white to the mixture to finish off the, the skin with a final highlight. And with this highlight I focused on the most visible parts of the model. Then 
Then I made a mixture of one part anthracite grey and one part white because I right here decided that I wanted an additional highlight on the on the black um, rope the model is wearing. So I painted on an edge highlight on the entire black area of the model. Then I painted the pouches and I wanted this to be to have a leathery color. So I started off with earth. Um, whilst I was painting this model, I painted one of the arches as well. And for example, the shoes of the archer are painted in this color. Once that's dry, I'll wash it with Agarch Earthshade. And now we have the shading in place. I go back to the earth and I'm going to apply a first rough highlight to the pouches. I then make a mixture of one part earth and one part desert yellow and I repeat this process by building up the highlight, reinforcing the color and making sure I leave little bits of the previous coats visible and that way we build up a transition in the color. I finish this off by a highlight of pure desert yellow just on the most uh, outer parts and most visible parts where I want the light to be focusing on. Next using BC Brown I paint in the wood part of the of the weapon the model is carrying. So in case of the archer which I'm not showing um, I would paint the bow in these colors. I also painted the teeth with the beastie brown. Next I made a mixture of one part beastie brown and one part leather brown. And I paint in a highlight on the wooden parts of the model. This is then followed by a highlight of pure leather brown and again I make sure I leave parts of the previous layers visible so that there is a color transition starting to appear. Also I highlighted the teeth using the leather brown. So to finish the wooden parts off, I made a mixture of one part leather brown and one part white. And I applied this as an edge highlight. And this is one of the stages in which the basing got in the way of the painting process. Next using dead flesh I finished off the teeth. I made sure I left a little bit of all the browns visible. Um, the dead flesh is a nice color to have some sort of more like rotting teeth instead of really healthy nice and white teeth. Next I used metallic black and I painted in the, the kettle and the blade of the weapon. Next both, both these parts are washed using non oil. And this makes them nice, uh, nice and dark. And as you can see I applied quite a lot of the non oil too. Then I washed it again using Agro's Earthshade, but this time I was uh, 
making sure the wash was nicely spread and not um, as thick as the non-oil. This will make the metal appear more worn and weathered and dirty. And once that's dry, I apply a dry brush of gun metal over those uh, two parts. I make sure on the kettle that I go from the top to the bottom so that I don't accidentally hit it on the bottom of the kettle. Then using silver, I repeat this process, but I make sure I'm a bit, um, it's a bit thinner than the previous dry brush. And on the weapon, I focus on the middle part of the weapon to do this. Then using dark sea green, I paint it in the base. Normally I'll paint the base last, but uh, because I needed to paint the mushroom somewhere, uh, some when, uh, I needed to have the basing, the stonework of the basing finished before I could do that. Then using khaki, I painted all the ropes. This is just blocking the color in, make sure it's on there. And then the ropes are washed using Arctic Earth Shade to get the shading in. And then I used steel to paint the cage where the weird flying orb thingy is in. And once that's dry, I wash that um, thing using Dragon of Nightshade. In the meantime, the Agrax Earthshade has dried, so I now apply a highlight of pure khaki to the ropes. Um, I forgot some parts, I painted those in there. Now I could continue painting the cage and using steel again I apply a highlight to the, to the model and I first focus on the edges and I then block in the areas where I want the light to be reflecting from. Next using medium sea grey I dry brush the base. And this is then followed by a dry brush of grey, and with the grey I focus more on the outer edges of the basin. Then I used earth again, and I used this to paint all the mushroom stems and um, later on the, the mushrooms that needed to be white and also I painted in the bone parts on the model. As you can see I forgot to paint the 
white mushroom caps, but I painted those later uh, in using the earth. I then used Agro's earth shade and then washed all the bone parts on the model. And once that's dry, it's back to earth to start working on highlights on the bone parts. So again, I built this up. I start off using the earth to make sure I leave parts of the previous layer visible. And now we have a nice color to work from to put a couple of highlights on. So I make a mixture of one part earth and one part bone white. And I start reinforcing this previous highlight. This is then followed by another highlight of pure bone white. And to finish the bone parts off, I make a mixture of one part bone white and one part dead white. And I apply a final highlight to the to the bone part. Next I took beige and I started working on the white mushrooms and all the mushroom stems. I just simply painted this over the earth coat that's already on there. So that the earth just functions as a, a base where this color will actually stick on. In the deep, deeper recesses on the bottom of the mushroom caps, for example, I leave the earth. Next I make a mi mixture of one part beige and one part ivory, and I'm going to apply this as a highlight. On the mushroom caps I paint. The bottom of the cap and the top of the cap. And this is then followed by a highlight following the same uh, principle as the previous one of pure ivory. I just make sure once again that I leave a little bit of the previous highlight visible so that a little bit of a color transition gets into place. Next I took gory red and I painted in both the eyes on the model. For the small eye I then applied a dot of bloody red. Uh, this is what I would do to all the other night goblins as well, or moon clang rods I'm sorry. And for the bigger eye I just apply a rough highlight throughout the middle of the eye. Which is then followed by um, a large dot of dead white. And that I then paint with moon yellow. And using black, I'll paint in a pupil. Next it was on to the red mushrooms and I started off by painting the mushroom caps using dark flesh tone. The dark flesh tone purely is there to make the red cover better. Red just covers better over brown and these darkest red tones than over black. I then paint over the entire part using gory red. I then highlight the red mushroom caps using a mixture of one part gory red and one part bloody red and I do this following the same method as I did the white mushroom caps. 
So I apply a little bit of highlight on the bottom and on the top of the mushroom cap. And this is then finished off using pure bloody red. Next, using ivory, I paint in the white dots on the mushroom cap. Um, some on some of the uh, mushrooms in the kettle, there are some uh, of the white dots as well, and these are later on painted in the exact same way as these. Um, I then apply a little highlight of uh, that white to the top of these white spots. Next, I use turquoise, and I paint it in the weird flying orb thing. I then made the mixture of two parts turquoise and one part ivory and I applied this as a first base rough highlight to the to the orb and his wings. Next I add one part ivory to the mixture and I start reinforcing the highlights. By adding two parts ivory to the mixture, I continue building these um, highlights up. And I then add two parts dead white to the mixture and I repeat the process. Again, in all these stages, I make sure little bits of the previous layers constantly stay visible. For the final layer I add two parts dead white to the mixture again and I apply this highlight only to the to the orb in the center so I do not put this on the wings. I then take hex legion and I paint in these magical mushrooms. At least I assume they're magical mushrooms since I'm not aware of purple. I then make a mixture of two parts hex legion and one part stonewall grey and I start highlighting these mushrooms as well. And again, you guessed it, this goes following the same principle as the other mushrooms on the base. I highlight a little bit on the on the white edges on the bottom and then highlight the upper part. I then add one part ivory to the mixture and I repeat this process. And due to the size of these mushrooms, I decided to, after this layer, add one more layer. So I added two more parts ivory to the mixture, and I continued building it up towards the top, and just a, a really small edge on the bottom of the mushroom. Then, as for the other mushroom in the in the kettle, I painted it Adriatic blue. And then I made a mixture of two parts Adriatic blue and one part ivory. And I applied this as a first highlight.
Now I add two parts of that white to the mixture and I reinforce this previous highlight. And for the final highlight on this uh, mushroom, I add four more parts that white. That leaves only the markings on the hood to paint. So I take some dead white and this uh, is actually pretty easy to do. I draw a white line and then I build up this line into a shape that I want by just constantly adding little bits of paint to the side of the line. And I go over the entire hood as far as I want and I finish it off by basically painting a line over the entire distance where the markings are on. Then I take Moon Yellow and I paint over these white parts and that basically finishes off this model. So I give the model a coat of dull coat and then it was done. This model was a lot of fun to paint even though it's quite a lot of work but uh, I'm pretty happy with the end result. So I hope you liked this video and as you can see this is the end result of you. Hope you liked the video. And I'm gonna thank you for watching and please like, share, subscribe if you want to. Leave a comment as well. If you didn't like the video, you're welcome to leave a comment as well. You're more than welcome to leave a comment and tell me what's wrong so I can improve on that. So again, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.